West West show. Tell of lover, welcome into another episode of the One Three Five Footy Show. Uh, proudly part of the One Three uh, West West Network. Um, you can go check out all our other podcasts and articles on the website westwestnet dot com. Um, shop. Welcome, also welcome, Stace. Uh, Host of the Counteract Podcast, joining me tonight as co-host. How are you going, Wolf? Yeah, good, mate. How's things? It's been a while since I've been on, so good to be back. I've been enjoying the footy uh, silently because my teams haven't been winning, but now I've got to jump on and support the boys, so thanks for having me on again, Wolf. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, good episode of you and uh, Si and Bobby um, when I was away as well, so um, yeah, good to have you back on board. Hopefully Si joins us later on as well. Um, he's on the night shift on the grind, so uh, filling in for him tonight, please. Thanks, Luz. No worries. Um, how you been anyway? Yeah, good, man. I've got um, got a new baby, almost three months now, so not getting much sleep and also trying to, you know, I've been stepping back a bit for the podcast, trying to do help out the family and stuff, so I can only jump on when I can. But yeah, now I've been good, man. Yourself, how have you been? Ah, yeah, good, bro. Yeah, yeah, just, um, same, mate, you're just busy at work, so it's been good to try and just be, try and keep these on, keep, uh, seeing you can jump on, so, good to have different voices, different opinions, too. Yep. Um, always better with a few more, though, so, um, hopefully if the boys jump on, um, they can come with their views. Uh, as you mentioned, it's been, uh, been a hard few weeks for, uh, for us Warriors fans. I see you've been <laughs> sporting your New South Wales gear more yep, lately, yep. so <laughs> got a final winner recently. Um, let's get straight into it, man. Round 25, only three more rounds of the regular season. Um, man, season's come right at the end already. Um, so trying to enjoy these last few, few weeks now. Uh, we're down to the last couple of months and I know how Quiet it gets on the weekends and soon like you just kind of there's so much sport on, come so many games, and then it all gets pulled away and then you're kind of twiddling your thumbs waiting for the next season. So uh yeah, these next few weeks will be full on, so I'm gonna try and enjoy them as much as I can, try and free up my weekend calendar so we can uh, get in front of some of these games too. Yep. Um especially this last week, bro. Let's just quickly um Go to our Eyes Calavera Awards, our All Eyes Award for your Player of the Week. Who stood out to the, over the weekend from the games you watched, bro? Yeah, not so much a player. Oh, oh, there was a uh, All Eyes on Me moment that I really liked. So I'll give my award to um, Mike Gasivo from the, the Parramatta Eels. So there was this moment um, quite late on in the game between the, the Roosters and the Eels. And I think the score was 38-8. So the game was already gone at that point. But, you know, Teddy he catches this attacking bomb and he starts sprinting for the try line. And you see Mike Acevo, he sprints across from the opposite wing and he makes this tackle and he holds Teddy up in goal. Oh, now, yes. Yeah, now in the context of the game, it didn't matter. And you'd sort of forgive a guy for giving up on that, that type of play as the game was effectively over. But, you know, Sivo, he's been criticised in the past for his effort areas and he spent some time in reserve grade because of it. So for him to make those efforts, um, you know, he came off the bench in that game. Mm-hmm. And I can see in the team list this week, you know, he's been named to start. You know, I think that effort play from him that earned him a recall to the starting lineup. So those little one percenters, I'll give him a, all eyes on me this week. Hey, so that's a nice call out to Michael Sivo because... Yeah, just not seeing him for a few weeks and um, almost like a shadow of what he used to be. Um, kind of coming in late to the game too. Look, kind of forgotten that he was part of that uh, that Eels framework. So yeah, that's a nice mention also for your uh, all eyes. Uh, shouting out to yeah, the Eels. They get a lot of love too on this podcast, and I know we got some it's... Eels supporters who are part of the um, who are part of our network as well. So uh, they'll give them one one little glimmer of hope there. Nice. So did you see that about um like there's like some fan must be like quite popular fan on online, but he like called out Gutho and then Joe and Galway replied to him and he's like, What well, stop supporting us? Oh <laughs> no. <nah. laughs> I was like, what a reply to people. Right. Nice. Well, uh how's it going, Hello. Alfie? Hello bro. But late, mate, you just finished training. Yeah, sorry, man. Are we kicked off? All good, all good. Yeah, yeah, right. We just a Tigers jersey. Yeah, it looks like it is. We're second team, yeah. though. One win, one win, and yeah, you know. Yeah. I put on the game, so we'll do a fresh live update. Oh, second, man. Hello, hello, man. 
Has to be here, bro. Know, bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were just kicked off, man. We only just got in through our introductions. Um, we're just saying how poor your efforts are coming this late, but it's all right, mate. <laughs> uh, we just finished doing all eyes, so um, I'll go to mine, give you a bit of bit of time to settle in. Um, so my all eyes for the weekend probably um more so just his effort and bouncing back. Um. And also with the announcement of him moving over to the Dragons' Valentine Homes, um, he was horrible against the Broncos. So it was nice to see him find some form. Um, yeah, and just just some of the things he did in that game, that catch, with kind of a weird crossfield kick that he that picked up on the fly. Um, just some real good moments from Valentine in that game. Um, so my all eyes goes to to him after yeah that game against the Broncos last week. Um, how about you, Alfie? What you got there, mate? Yeah, bro. Um, first of all, Stacey, this is not a Tigers. Uh, this is I'm ripping the Crushers uh, Union uh, Crushers. rugby club here in the oh, coast. Okay. So uh, shout out to them, uh, Dolphins. Dolphins feed it. <laughs> oh, t- Titans. But Titans. um, I don't know, bro. I had um, I don't know what what you said, Stacey, but did uh, anyone mention um that Hammer versus um Fox race? Uh, the chase down. Yeah. That'd be my uh, eyes, um, all eyes on me. Uh, Player of the Week award, man. Just like two, three years ago, Fox probably scored that, eh, bro? But um, just how cool, you know, we've been talking about the this idea of bringing a race in. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, Fox looks a bit built and muscled up now, eh, these days. And he looked like he was carrying a, he's had an injury plague season, but fuck the hell I gave him. It looked like a head start, like, fuck my hips. Last five meters, man, he just caught up, just shifted into fifth gear, man. That was a mean try saving tackle. That's my um, especially when you watch the highlights, but like that, when you when it's happening live, and even the camera angles, it was just like set on at O'Kan. You just usually that's like watching him score from like way out, like oh man. Well, bro, and then when they change angles, you just like, see Hammer come across, like oh, oh. so it was like that try he scored, um, taking the bomb right on. Near his dry line, bro, and he just fucking burnt everyone. It was oh, like that, yeah, yeah, that kind of right. moment, but on defense. And plus that one on one, man, I don't know. Um, Fox, not 100%, but both Hundy, I'd like to see. But yeah, man, fucking, um, he's so smooth, eh? He looks real natural when he runs. He looks like he's like still in second, third gear, man. But when he turns on that, um, fucking puts it down to top gear, man, got that acceleration speed, eh? Just. Um, I, I would put my money on him if the if the Dolphins. Oh, are, I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I wouldn't pick them for grand finalists, bro. But if he lines up, he'll take my uh, money for fastest mm-hmm. than they know. Yeah, yeah. We, we mentioned fast. it last week. It stinks. Um, as I don't know if you're allowed to take the uh, speech, the champion of the Parker side of the family, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> <Not even well. laughs> just look at that trailer, um, bro. Come out and um, rubbishing it. And he's got like Saab and a couple of other it? athletes um, that he trains. Oh, he was like, oh, none of my boys would be taking part in this. But what a seal guy, eh? Hey? Like, oh, come on, mate. He's just a trainer, mate. I reckon Saab would be. I wonder if they got some prize money. Like, comes to the scene as a sprinter. Any incentives for these guys to line up? Yeah. In a sp- yeah. In a- yeah. Yeah. See the hammer, though, shucks. He makes you think, eh? Hey? If he turned around and chased Bradman best in Origin, they might have won the series, but he's <laughs> going to be us. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's the thing. Even Turbo, like, I don't know if Turbo's got speed anymore. Like, if he's, yeah, who, who, who you got too scared to try and push? Who just put your money on, bro? Fastest in the end. I'd, I'd go Saab, Saab in, uh, in 100. He's, he's yeah, that tall, the lanky. Yeah, the, 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 the he's high that, I like his... Um, Catch up with the, the second half of the you race. See his, uh, I think it was a tweet or, or something. He had a message online. He was like, oh, I, I, "I won't be racing. I'll be, I'll be, um, I'll be playing on that day." Okay. So it was like, Get is, it, is the reserve grade team going to win the grand <laughs> final with me playing there? Because it's not going to be you a top World's team. Cup final. <laughs> uh, all right, let's jump over to your uh, Kaya Kelly Awards. Uh, Stace, anyone, uh, any team or person stand out to you this week? Yeah, I've got a bit of a different one, eh? But, um, man, I'm going to have to give it to myself, eh? Oh, wow. Shit. I was watching my wife, eh? She had some family stuff, so she took off down the line and uh, for a couple of days took the kids. So I had to work, so I stayed back up here in Auckland and had the house to myself. So I thought, shucks, I'll uh, 
have a few beers, watch some empty out the clip on YouTube and stuff. And after that, our first episode of the 12540 show for the year came yeah. on after. And me and you, tons, man, quite bullish for the season oh, after the geez. Warriors' performance in 2023. Simon, mate, you're not a you were so like full of hope. Yeah, full of hope for the Broncos for this year. Oh. But my preseason prediction was Warriors Broncos Grand oh. Final. <laughs> that is over before it even started. <laughs> so, I'm like, fuck, give myself a word just for that guy up prediction. You can't come on a podcast, do a league podcast, and you have guy up predictions like that. Oh, well, sure, just that, like, that doing the episode round and season, you and the Warriors. Guy Kelly of the week. Guy Kelly of the year. Me and the Warriors. Stick to it. Yeah, promise. Yeah. Had to turn oh. it off. I was getting sick and having an embarrassment watching that shit. I was like, oh. Uh-huh. All right, so who you are uh, who you calling up for your Kaya Kelly award this week, mate? Man, and uh, I'd hate to do this because you know I don't want to be one of those cringing bro, the officials again. But they get <laughs> they get one for that game, bro. This locking call that the Knights got screwed on, but then the, they had footage um, of uh, what's his name uh, missing that shot, Ponga, that they did close up and it wasn't even over. But you know, in the first half of the um, extra time. Boom, got the ball, mm. boom. And then those two defenders, they weren't really even doing anything, bro. They're just standing right there. Um, But one, they would, they played it back. They missed the offside. They were like fucking a meter in front of the referee. Everyone is. And these referees fucking too scared chicken shit to call out offsides on the, when it's a uh, play the ball, bro. Um, but yeah, man, they missed that. And um, I don't know, bro. I don't know if that's blocking. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. where were these guys? Yep. They're not. They're, they're not um, going out as long as you're not running out of your line to stop someone. But if you're there, mm-hmm. you don't have to move for anyone if, to get around. You know. I just thought they missed a couple of penalties that could have blew up there. Like I was saying, they're offside, and um, that could be uh, the chances. Fucking the Knights screwing their season, eh? But, well, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's why it was so again. crucial. They also season the final game for them. Um, yeah, and you think they were onside as well, like they're behind the hooker. So you could make an argument that their potential, right. the potential for yeah, them to receive the ball. ball. Yeah, 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 playing a short ball. So you know, I don't. Where's the difference between a decoy runner and a a blocker, blocker. particularly mm. if they don't interfere with the play, like you mentioned inside. Well, they're so, they're right you know, there. <laughs> they're, you're an option to run. So where yeah, exactly. are they going to go? You can't stop outside. teams playing rugby league, man. They're in support. Particularly if they, they could make the argument, hey, I was ready to catch the ball over there as the option. Which I reckon when it comes to the extra the, time, dummy half dummy uses. hookers and dummy halves, they're chicken shit, bro. But you can see the A and B defender flying out of the line. Man, have a dummy, have a go, man. Yeah, right. And especially if those guys aren't there. If the halfback's there, it's obvious that it's going to go to the, um, So you've got to have run up, bro. a couple you know of what? options there. Mm-hmm. It gets a bit boring, bro, eh? Extra <laughs> time is just set up for goal. And, um, it can drag mm. on. Yeah, yeah. Just have the team. Yeah, good call there. Nice. Um, Makai Akele, we were going to go outside of the uh, realms of rugby league, actually. I was looking around. Um, we're actually going to go over to Vanuatu, to uh, Nailin Nipiko, uh, bowling his three no balls <laughs> and, <laughs> and his six sixes um for yeah for the salmon in the t20 to pick up a record score in t20 um unfortunate for the uh Vanuatu national but yeah it was a great effort from him but i don't know how you bowl such a horrible over oh was that Samoa versus vanuatu yeah yeah the one where the kid got how the, many runs the was it record for t20 39 so because uh, if you hit uh, <laughs> Is he six balls and over? He had a no ball so he there. must have like um, a uh, no balls because six sixes and maximum if you hit sixes on every ball and over it's thirty six, right? Yeah. Well, that was the record. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's so cool. this guy threw three three no balls, but it, that's the thing. So there was one dot ball in the over. Even he had a dot ball, but then he had three no balls and one of those got smacked for a six and it came seven off that. <laughs> so wow. Uh, Fortunately, that bowler is my guy at Kelly of the Week. All right, let's head to uh, quick headlines. Um, firstly, the uh, naming of the stadium for tomorrow night's encounter for the Warriors versus the Broncos. 
Uh, it'll be a send-off for Sean Johnson's retirement. They're renaming GIO Stadium and given naming rights to Sean Johnson Stadium. Uh, your thoughts on that, side? Great honour for the man. Oh, that's awesome, bro. Then, um, if I'm correct, that's the last game of the season, eh, at home? Yeah, yeah, last home game. Was yeah, like... nah, man, fully deserved, bro. He's a legend, man. Well, I don't know. He's up He's up there with Stacey, but in terms of number seven, I've got uh, Stacey Jones, just a little bit above them. You know? I think they've got, like, uh, grand final each, eh? Just didn't get over the line. It's coming, though. Keep the faith. It's coming. But, um, no, nah, it's just what a good uh, reward, bro. Like I said, he deserves it, man. He's, he's a real legend. Cool no, nah, it's cool. It's cool to... Who they, who they got? Dolphins? Doggies. Doggies. Oh, I sure will. Yeah. Awesome. No, bro. What do you reckon, Stace? The Colombo Cup. That's yeah. uh, awesome. Oh, mate, rough yeah. last week awesome against the Seagulls. I hope they do it. I hope they do it for those. And uh, Sean Johnson has a big one. Guys will be smiling, smiling yeah. down on that game. Yeah, Stace, your thoughts on the stadium? Yeah, I like it. It's a nice touch. You know, SJ's always been a bit of a rod for criticism when it comes to his time with the Warriors. But if we look back on his career, he's in the top five best ever Warriors, in my opinion. I probably think he's the third best Warrior we've ever had. Nice. So I'm glad he gets a, a proper send off like list, that. Bro? Who's your list? Top five. Well, I've got Stacey Jones as number one, and I've got Simon Mannering number two. So mm. I'll put uh, SJ third, probably, after those two, in terms of their things. But, um, yeah, it's a nice touch, eh? That stadium, I like it. Mm-hmm. There's this thing we talked about this off here, but yeah, yeah. where um, in, in the, the Warriors supporters' Facebook page, in the seventh minute, they want to do a standing ovation for him, where, you know, to honour him as number seven, um, just for a whole minute. We're sort of laughing. I hope they're not doing what everyone's cheering while auto cars are getting a run away in the corner or something like that. (laughs) 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 I'll be 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 a slow shopper. Yeah, get him off, get him off. (laughs) Yeah, so it's always been his chase. Always when they're going well, he gets a lot of the credit, and when they're going poorly, he gets a lot of the blame. Mm. But I, yeah, I think he's the third best. Just my own personal opinion. Our third best ever player. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. That's fair, Stacey. And then um, Mannering, he was a soldier, man. Have they done something like this previously for anyone going out? I'm not sure. It's a good question. Eh? They, 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 they're doing a lot more now, I feel yeah, like, yes. than they used to do. Mm. But um, Which is good because, you know, people put their heart and soul into the jersey. So yeah. good to see off some legends. Yeah, he should have yeah. been a one-club guy, I think, as well. I don't yeah, know what happened that time with the Sharks. Yeah. How that all unfolded really? was pretty, pretty stinky, but happened, yeah. Bro. He wasn't getting any love. Yeah, yeah, but, um, you know, I think he's played, what, 200 game, odd games for, just in the Warriors colours, so he deserves a send-off. I hope mm-hmm. they get a win for him too. Nice. All right. Uh, you spoke about it earlier, so I just with the those calls that are kind of cut through for the games. Um, Buzz Roth threw, threw it around. Um concept of maybe changing the scoring system um, so that these teams, you know, they work hard um, and they get nothing out of it. Well, like Some of the guys thought there was merit in it. Your thoughts? What do you mean scoring system like um, for job goals? Uh, no, no, like just in terms of like you, you only get two points or one for a draw or nothing for a loss. He's oh, saying surely yeah. there needs to be something when it gets this close for these teams. Um, I don't know. I don't know, bro. I don't know how that changes the point scoring, but... It, uh, I thought about it um, when they, uh, what's his name, uh, Wayne Bennett, they interviewed Wayne Bennett, and he's like a fan of just scrapping the whole fucking thing. Uh, no. But I get Gold it from a fan's ex- uh, perspective. It's, um, the excitement, it's excitement. And when it comes down to the competition, like, you can't split a premiership, but you got to go find a winner. Mm. But um, it's just, it's just a, really, it's just a toss of a coin, eh, bro? Whether it's, whether you get, you know, it can come down to a mistake, but, um, set for set, if you can get in range, you got a decent kicker, man. It's, um, uh, most teams, um, I don't know, bro. Yeah, so I was just, uh, there was a lot of sit on the fence answer, bro, but, uh, maybe we'll just split if there's no, if you, if after five minutes each way, just split the one point. Yeah, that's, that'd be fair. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Stace, Stace, what's your take on that? 
I, I do get where he's coming from because we'll probably do some reviews, but you think that um, the Cowboys won by 40. <laughs> they get two points. And then we're talking about that. Um, you brought up that game earlier, so that night's, that night's uh, uh, Sharks game. You know, these guys slogging it out for 85 minutes. Mm. A one point win after all that, and they get two points as well. It feels like some two points is a bit more harder than others. So I think there might be some merit to it. I, part of me doesn't like it because, you know, you think about Super Rugby. I've seen teams with more wins. Mm. not make it because another team got more bonus points. Yeah. And that's where it sort of gets a bit murky. I would hate to see that type of thing unfold because it should ultimately boil down to wins and losses, not all these other extra bits and bobs that you want to chuck in there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Because I think that's something that um, Super Rugby, I was so confused, like how Canterbury had such a horrible season. Yet right, that's a good right example. There, right at the end, and I'm like, oh, did I miss some games where they suddenly got good? But yeah, no, it was just the way the the mess worked and the way the comp ran. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I get it. I probably understand why he thinks that, but yeah, just those, the things that roll off from it probably get a bit too difficult later on for people to understand. Um, the latest immortal, Ron Coop. I don't know much about him. Uh, probably a bit before my time, probably playing when you're in your 20s, Stace, so you probably have a bit more context to him. But, uh, <laughs> your guys' thoughts on the announcement last night come to you, Stace? I don't know if you've heard Yeah, a uh, bit before my time, but I think he was part of, there was that Dragons team that won like 11 straight. Oh, this yeah, is yeah. pre-NRL, pre-Winfield Cup, and I think he was a big part of that team. So his record really stacks up. And we sort of, I heard the argument that, you know, we're getting to the point where, running out of people who have seen these guys play. Yeah. So everyone, everyone's always like, yeah, sweet, put Cam Smith in or whoever you want, local guys, because people have watched them. But guys like Ron Coote, none of us watched them. I think he played in the 60s and early 70s. Yeah. So, you know, it's starting to get hard to put some of these older players in just because we don't have, have people who were alive to watch them. So I yeah. actually don't mind honouring some more of those older players. Mm-hmm. Because you think, you know, like Ron Coote, he was the 60s and 70s, but they have, there was no one else who was nominated who was before that. And you think about all the gun players, who, there would have been heaps who played before that who no one really remembers. So I like the idea of honouring the past and then giving, before giving some of these new guys a go. Mm. So uh, from that perspective, even though I couldn't really comment on his playing, I'm happy they did that. Yeah, so you know much about the guy? Yeah, bro. Nah, just what's um, you know, just what's written about him and um, um, what uh, journalists have said. Uh, he he's a bunnies legend, bro. He's uh played for uh, the South Bunnies and um, like the Eastern Suburbs um in the sixties and seventies. So it's cool because these people are these are my calls. These are the boys they call uh, boomers, bro. You know, yeah, this generation's yeah, still yeah, around, too. and it's really cool. And I think it's good that. If you're starting this, well, they did, they did it the other way around, right? They did the murals and now they've got this Hall of Fame. But once they start, they start getting a whole pool of Hall of Fame, Hall of Famers, it's got this extra, another competition, or not competition, but level of the murals. And um, mm. yeah, I think you, know, you might start seeing um, players from the, the 80s and 90s, because even in the 80s for me, there's plenty more. You can put in, bro. Hey, like Sterlo, he'd be a favorite for mine to be next to Mortal. Um, Alfie, but um, yeah, bro. Now nah, it's just good. Uh, it's just good for uh, if you look at the um, his record and what he's done. Um, I guess he was, you know, you don't have much footage out of those guys. Probably none at all. Probably. Yeah, like probably not. Not getting too technical of how the actual thing works. What do you think um, separates a Hall of Famer from an Immortal? Yeah. I don't know, and it would get to know. Um, I, oh, I heard something about um, their process where, uh, but then Andrew Johns come out and say him now and Wally who are in that Kalapu, um, they don't get any say or uh, no one uh, touch base with them about what you know their their uh, thoughts would be. Who should be the next one, kind of thing. No, it's kind of like, you know, you start building this Hall of Fame, and now, uh, and it's a mixture too of media, and, and it's weird how they just put. Andrew John straight in there. Oh. 
wrong yeah, long after he retired. Stuff, yeah. But um, mm-hmm. you know what the process around that would be is bit, it's interesting, eh? Like who who uh, gets to say like is it because it seems just random, eh? The, the errors they got Mal was the last one, but does that mean is his is his era Mal and Wally and all that that's done? And start looking forward to the lock years and and two uh, thousands. Well, yeah, you know, I guess that's the thing. Yeah, like you know, you if the other older gonna get ones. in there anytime, mm-hmm. you would think. Yeah, do you know much on the context states? Like how what, how they differentiate? What what makes someone become an immortal? Well, I think that immortals is at this stage at least only players. Thank you. So the Hall of Fame we had Wayne Bennett was. Um, inducted. I think they've had some other guys who were like, you know, fifty years of game. media coverage. Yeah. I think Rabs might be in there. The uh, Hall of Fame okay. I'm talking about. <clears throat> so models but there's sort of like levels as well. So there's um, you know, Hall of Fame means you were, you were probably you know very good, mm. but Immortal means you're like one of the greatest players who's ever lived. So there's only fourteen. What well, that was the fourteenth Immortal. In a hundred and twenty odd years of rugby league, so uh, okay, yeah. and you look at so, some of the records of these guys, particularly those early guys. I think um, Rog brought up one of the guys, um, Frank Burge or something. In his record, it's like defies belief when you read his stats. So, yeah, these are the best of the best. Uh, okay, yeah. So yeah. It's sort of the, the Hall of Fame, and then the best guys in the Hall of Fame become the immortal. So, yeah. And the Hall of Fame is kind of your your contribution to the game. Like you don't have to be kind of one of the best words. Yeah, it's your contribution to the game, and it, <clears throat> a lot of it's um, what happens on the field and all the rest of it, not just not mm. really, you know, you're, you're a good person. I know they, there was some criticism. I think Les Boyd, he got inducted recently, but just in this recent intake. He spent a year on the sideline, suspended for... Yeah, that's right, yeah. I heard about he that clotheslined um, yeah, someone yeah. and ended someone's career. So yeah, that's right. One well, of the other guys came out saying, you know, how can this guy get inducted? Yes, yeah, so it's a bit... Um, I don't know if that should come into it. Like, you know, he served his time. His record's still pretty awesome. And he is one of the best. But, shit. A year suspension for ending a guy's career. <laughs> yeah. that, I don't know. It'll it'll see, see, be yeah. In. yeah, I was just wondering, like, guys like Sonny Bill, do they kind of make a... You know, kind of so... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I was sort of a bit a surprised. Um, do they 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 look a bit um, unfavorably on guys who um, you know jump codes? So I was yeah. surprised that they. Would um, put him as a rugby league immortal? No, I would. No, just as uh, ability skill level. No, not not for his contribution. That's what I mean, like they, Hall of Fame. Like, they weren't enough. Like, but... like it's something different. Yeah, maybe a Hall of Fame, but you know, I don't know how many games he played because he spent you know ten years in Union. Yeah, yeah, so, so it wasn't a you long know, career this one. Yeah, two, he two played his whole career in league. And either way, of other end of Union, he started league, came back uh, to the Brewsters, won another one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think he played players. it long enough in, yeah. in league in NRL. So for that reason, I'll dis- discount him. Is Greg Inglis in the Hall of Fame? Greg Inglis in the Hall of Fame? Yep, he was inducted this this time around. So I think you've got to be retired for X amount of years before your thing. And that's why a lot of these guys were the best guys. Mm. So the modern guys, Cam Smith, Billy Slater, Cooper Cronk, and Greg Inglis, and obviously Benji as well. Sam a lot of years of pain from those guys. You just run those names run, run off your tongue, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're doing the commentary. All right, nice. Uh, any other headlines, boys? Anything else that you've seen uh, throughout the week that stood out to you? Not let's yeah, bro, straight yeah. into our rep. What about some uh, shout out to um, the Richmond uh, Rose, man? Nice, Wolf. Hey. Yeah, man. Um, and bro, it's, uh, how cool is that? Especially to Henry. As a um, Good on him, bro, real Pacifica club. Um, I was talking to, uh, uh, shout out to Billy Ken. The in laws, uh, my father in law, he, he was a member. Oh, yeah. Of the last uh, Richmond Rose, nineteen eighty. The last time they won it, man, it was uh, two years in a row, oh, seventy-nine, eighty. But uh, he come across an eighty uh, from uh, yeah. Robert and bro. So he was like, "There's what a couple Kiwis in that team. Uh, that's Fred Akoi. Uh, talking about uh, he's playing with the Solomonas and their uh, rugby league world. Damn. So to come back after what was you saying, forty-four years, man, and and win it." Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so cool, bro. Because that was, uh, as you will know, bro. That's the cradle of 
was figure was and yeah, yeah. the city clubs say uh Klangi, Ponsonby, Gwellin, all these suburbs where um you know, us, you know, kids of um kids of people who made the um, trip over here, bro, we, we started playing these league clubs, man, and yeah, uh, it's just yeah. interesting, bro. And they played against Murhu, who back then was a Balangi team, mate. Eh? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, just how funny are the different, um, you know, when they change and you start moving out into the southern uh, sub- suburbs and that. Um, but uh, Richmond and, and Grillin area has been uh, still uh, pretty there, and, and St. Paul's it was still pretty bus figure, you know what I mean? A lot of, um, not so many own houses around there, bro, but that, that club's been really strong. Pacifica and its history, bro. So, big ups to uh, Richmond Rivers and and uh, oh, we for you know, they also we say, uh, um, it was coaching Henry, 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 you gotta get him on, man. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm jump on. on. Yeah, Kevin Locke was running around at the back for them as well. Child, right? Really, yeah, yeah, bro. James Kevin, I think he was running oh, around at the back. Yeah, yeah, so that's good that you were able to keep them from last year because they were in the grand final last year as well, eh? Yeah. They went down to the park, so good on them for holding on and coming back. So, yeah, that's a pretty good work to two years in a row. They didn't fall off. So, um, yeah, it looks like they must be building something good there at Richmond. Um, they got the Richmond Roses as well, the girls' teams. Every grade, they got um the girls playing there at the moment. So, Ali went out there for a few trainings, so. Sounds like they've got a good product, like especially for the girls' game. So yeah, it looks like there um, are some good things happening out there at Richmond. Um, about you, say anything else, Paul? Nah, yeah, I'm, that's a good shout out there. Sorry, on the Rovers, so uh, on Richmond, but yeah, congrats to them getting that win. Yeah, and I'll give a shout out to Papakura. It's my local these days. So they, I don't know how they got their front to the final because they've never really been a strong team, but you know, good on them for making it this far. So. Yeah, shout out to the, those boys. The Oskalava Cup, we are down to the nitty gritty. I don't know actually how the um this works, but um we had our top six, and the bottom four of the top six played out last week. Uh, so who did you have? Did you take on Mike? Shut up, bro. Oh yeah, no, nah, yeah, that's right. You, you it was you and uh, Roger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God squad, bro. Um. And just the fucking injury hit me, um, unfortunately. Cotter, mis- fucking miserable 17 points. Barnett was down on his usual. This is his lowest of the season, I'm pretty sure. Barnett got me 78 as a captain. But, um, yeah, all these guys that I usually expect. Uh, Dom Young kind of saved me. 86 points, mm. uh, as you alluded to, Tana. But, um, got dog squad right now on that. He's got um, Sarko Kinney, Carras scored him 73 points. Um, but yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been amazing for him, man. Uh, yeah, um, it's pretty much what it comes down to, bro. Hey, how'd your game go, bro? It was, uh, who scored for you? Yeah, yeah, so mine was pretty tight. I had uh, Ultimate Manly uh, coming Jerry in pretty quietly. Yeah. Um, yeah, leading there in third place. Oh, so it was huge for you. I- yeah, man. So I was quite fortunate. Um, Nathan Cleary as my captain, injured at the end there, so he didn't really pick up much. Um, but yeah, fortunately, um, some of my forwards, like I was saying from the Rabbitohs, Glow Matangi and uh, Cameron Murray coming through. Oh, you're you're doctor. pretty much done, like the Panthers, eh? Your Cleary's gone. Who are you gonna put? Deaton or who's left out there? I don't know. No, no. Just got some uh, background trades in the works. Just got. <laughs> yeah, there's the only like team. three teams in it, bro. That you can trade with. Yeah, these people are not even accepting my trades, man. Come on. Um, so, yeah, so uh, qualified through to the preliminary final. So, looks like second versus uh, the winner of the last yeah, one. No, so this year, next, who's been uh, killing it for you, Stace? Yeah, it's been a bit of a tough season, eh? You know? oh, second season. A lot of injuries every week. But. I was grateful, eh? like I looked at that semi-finals last week, sort of grateful to get that by, it sort of plays out like similar to NRL, <laughs> so I don't know if I, if I played God Squad, 
I would have lost last week, I think. So those are good scores. You're thinking to yourself, shucks. But I, I was I was grateful for the way that I was able to use that bike, get some extra players for this week. But Belize, right. is he pretty that solid for you? Week. He's been solid, but he's not solid tonight. <laughs> he's uh, He's been struggling to... I'm not sure. Oh, I've flipped and picked him. Quite high score. Paul, I dropped to. I don't know if that was the right call. We'll see how it washes out. You know, at the end, you don't want to lose and then have guns on the bench. Um, we scored more, so otherwise, you're like shucks. So um, it's going to be a good matchup. Up, make, uh, a lot of money the, on the line. Your captain was because um, so Pong has got the. Oh, he got Paramara. He was so um, he he'll probably make like. Five or six conversions. Yeah, it's a point i eh? I'll see how we're going. Oh, I don't know if I can change it's it. Has been your man? Is he your highest scorer, bro? Yeah, yeah. So I've just been consistently picking him every week. He's averaging in the 60s. So, you know, it's sort of like, well, you just sort of trust the guy who's, who's that good. So, um, he was a bit poor last week, but, you know, he's always good for at least a 40. I'm just hoping that they, they give him big minutes. But that's a point if I'm losing, yeah. I'm going to have to take a couple of risks. You know, there are guys like Reynolds who have those massive upsides, so you know, I might have to, to, to do a last minute change depending on how it's playing out. Matsana, with the big, good, big move. Kolo Matsangi, eh? Your skipper was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, I hey, might change it up. Oh, what about Murray? After the, uh... Yeah, yeah, no, no. Just after the commentary. Uh, I'll, take it, I'll go quickly go take a change to my captain. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, this is a good. Oh, those got Carrigan. It's up in there. A few little late changes in there. Yeah, um, yeah Carrigan's going to be huge for him. Oh, man, it's been solid. Eh? Congrats to him, bro, for our. Um, yeah, man, consistent um, the whole, whole league. Yeah, what do, you, what do they call that? Cup? I mean, uh, not when the, the premiership, but the. Uh, the round robin. Minor Premier. Premier. Minor Premiership. That's oh, yeah. Do we, get, do we do a prize for our minor premiums? Did we do that last year? Yeah. Hundy, isn't it? Yeah. Got a, last year or the year before. Oh, that's right. You were minor Premier last mm. year. But, yeah, he's been pretty solid with Hines, even though Hines is injured now. But, yep. Yeah, so, shout out to everyone that's in the finals for our Ice Club. I'm picking this guy. I'm picking this guy to go all the way. It's your yeah. end, Stace. It's the usual. Pull out of the field. Pull out of spreadsheet. Fantasy, it's your heels. <laughs> yeah. I'll be happy with that. I'll be happy with that. All right. We'll see how that goes. Nice work, boys. Any last words, so? Nah, brother. Good catch up again, man. Nah, nah, man. Have a good yeah, week, yeah. man. Catch you guys all up. Thank you, yours. Thanks for jumping on. A bit late. Uh, Stace, how about you, bro? Any last words? Nah, just... It's a Warriors fan. Have they put on a good performance on the SJ, uh, Jazz, all those boys who were leaving in their last um, home game. Nice, Wolf. Uh, thanks, boys, for jumping on. We're going to catch the last of this uh, Tigers game. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in, listening. Again, just go check us out on the website, wesweznet.com. Uh, latest edition of the Wesways Sports magazine will be dropping in a couple of weeks as well. Um, so jump on there, you'll be able to read some of the articles from our columnists here today as well. Okay, thanks boys. Oh, was awesome. Thank you. Cheers, was awesome. Bye.